Hey Rep Bags, I've got a free in one Forever Skies guide today. I'm gonna to show you guys where you can get the virus analyzer. I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and use it once you've got the right stuff. And ultimately, it will allow you to get past the dangerous plant life that you've discovered at this laboratory location. I'm streaming Forever Skies on my 100 Days channel, so go and check it out now. You'll find the links in the comment section and look out for more guides from me as I'm gonna be covering this game quite a bit as I'm enjoying it massively. So let's go. So just a quick note, take your time, explore lots of the other places and locations. This really is kind of like the end game area that you're meant to go. So if I'm spouting enough technology and stuff that you haven't discovered yet, you simply just haven't got to that point in the game and you shouldn't really, really hyper rush. But effectively, as long as you're following the tutorial and guided kind of missions about where to go and you're checking on your actual scanner map, you head into the exclamation mark with the orange marker on it and effectively the purple light on top of the massive structure that you can see. It's definitely different from all the rest. You are gonna need a lot of resources, particularly some of the motherboards, which require a lot of circuit boards. Just a little FYI, this is also the location where you'll find the crystals to go ahead and craft your personal extractor. It's pretty spooky, but of course you will find another computer that needs a battery replaced on it. Go ahead and climb the ladder and then drop down here and you can go ahead and get power to the lift to take you down underneath the dust. The under the dust locations are the only ones that are static and don't change, whereas a lot of the other places you'll come across above the dust have all got randomised features. Within what they are, i.e. if it's a turbine windmill farm, then it's still going to have them same resources, but you might not get as much or as many, or it'll be different in certain ones. There's plenty of storage inside this lift so you can make lots of trips back and forth and you are going to need to rely on your oxygen levels to be high. You can go ahead and craft a bigger oxygen tank if you've got the right upgrades but I didn't have it here but to be honest I didn't really need it. So head down into the underdust. You'll find lots of strange plants but most importantly is some of these energy crystals. You're going to need at least six possibly more if you're going to be making the extractor, the personal one and pick up some of these seeds too. You'll get 100 seconds of oxygen to go and explore, but there are ways that you can give yourself oxygen stations as you explore around these areas if you make the right kind of battery. That should all become self-explanatory once you go down here the first time. You're probably going to be doing this in one or two or maybe even three or four bursts, gathering all the resources and finding every little nook and cranny. You of course will replenish your oxygen every time you go back to the lift as well. You will definitely need at least one of the energy batteries to go ahead and give yourself some oxygen as we make our climb as we're going to be going upwards to find the analyzer. You should notice a dead body with a big yellow ladder pretty much as you came out of the lift and this is where we're going to be climbing up here. Now there's lots of secrets in this place, lots of little places and parkour areas to go and get extra loot and I got a bit distracted so it actually took me another three hours of live streaming before I came back and realised I had missed something. Yes, yes, totally ignoring all the signs. So we're going to go through the doorway here and I'm going to go straight on then turn left and you should be able to see the beaker sign here and then obviously the dead body and the ladder. Go up the ladder. Again, you can go and look around if you want for more resources and stuff, but basically go opposite the yellow ladder and you should find this room here with a walkway. Go across the walkway and keep following any beaker signs that you see on the wall, the graffiti. Then you've got a little jump up here and then we're going to keep going around this small corridor. Again, another beaker sign you saw on the left and then through this way and another one where you can also get some more oxygen using energy crystals. Probably a good idea if you haven't already searched the medium large uh, oxygen tank. Keep going across, jump over again, and keep making your way up. I am talking like you're a four year old because I did get distracted like a four year old and it took me quite a while to get back up here. Then simply go ahead and climb this ladder and you're pretty much nearly there. Once you turn around, you'll find there's a small room with two things that you need to go ahead and scan and analyze. Make sure you grab anything that you find on the table as well. And there's another oxygen pod here as well if you want to just stay here for a while. So go ahead and scan this, oxygen then scan the analyzer itself, and that's it. You'll be able to go ahead and build one of these back on your airship. Just a little FYI, there is a ladder that you can climb up as well to so gain access to a few more bits of loot hidden away. So check out your research station. You're gonna need two electrical elements, two energy crystals, and five of the polymer. Now the energy crystals you'll find scattered all around in that area that we just explored. 
So don't go making too many of the actual crystal batteries. Try and save some in probably around five at least. In fact, you want to have plenty of them as spare as you're going to need them to obviously then go ahead and craft the virus sampler. It needs another four NG crystals, another two polymer and one motherboard. The crystals will be in all sorts of places if you do need more. So just have a good look around and scout around in the upper parts of the seeding. And you might need to do a bit of parkour to get some that might be a bit higher. Also, make sure you've grabbed one of the seeds from these strange plants. The dust daisy is probably going to be the first thing you should analyse. Making sure you analyse this one first gives you access to the cryogenic booster, which allows you to go past some of the more dangerous plants or creatures in this area. Anyway, back to crafting and placing the virus analyzer. Go ahead and place the dust daisy inside. And now you've got a little mini game where you have to isolate this little pink purple virus. It's going to be surrounded by other things, and so we have to kind of isolate it. So I had a bit of help from chat in live stream doing this, and it may be different for depending on what you're trying to analyze and do, but it's still the same method. Each stage, three stages, where you have to basically end up with only the virus at the end. So I've got small, medium and large as an option here in number one, and you can see I purified part of it. And you can see I highlighted the virus alongside other particles here, and that was a mistake. So I'm showing you what happens. It basically resets and you have to begin again. It's also random every time as well. So you just got to make sure that the things that are highlighted are not that main virus. There's still a slight complication to it though. By the time you get to the third stage, if you've only got three things here, particles, then you still won't be necessarily be able to isolate the virus sometimes. You can see I can choose that one, but it's going to leave another particle and the virus. And that's the end of that option. It will restart again. So there's a bit of trial and error when you're analyzing and getting rid of some of these particles about which ones to get rid of, as you kind of just want to be left with at least one piece of the virus, the pink purple thing, and at least maybe two pieces of the other particles for the very end of choice. As you can see here, with just one particle and the virus, it wouldn't give me the option to go ahead and just isolate them. So let's go again with no cuts. I'm going to choose large for option one. Again, this might be slightly more randomized, but you get the idea. For option two, I'm going to go ahead and choose the uncharged version. FYI, I really like this mechanic. I really think it's unusual and different from most survival games. A really good addition. And then option three, I'm left with acid, neutral and alkaline. As you can see, acid is the one that you should choose, and that will leave just the virus extracted on its own. Still one more thing you've got to do. you actually got to take the virus outside the bottom of the analyzer. You can try doing something with your inventory, but of course it won't work. We need to go ahead and research it now. Place it in the research station, and that's all you need, and you'll get the hyperthermia booster. Once it's researched, you will then have to go ahead and make another one. Once you've got the recipe, it will require either another dust daisy and an energy crystal, or an energy crystal and one of them lullaby crickets that you may come across in farm areas. So three in one guide here, how to go ahead and analyze viruses, how to get past the dangerous creatures in the dust. Don't really want to spoil, like I said, what's behind the strange plants, and I didn't actually do it up to this point, so look out for more of that in the future. I probably will do another guide about what's exactly there and any more challenges. And of course, I'm going to be analysing all more of the stuff that we've got to see what it can do and give you a complete rundown. So until next time, Ratbags, latest.